The Weber test and the Rene test are both clinical examination techniques that use a tuning fork to help determine the likely cause of a patient's hearing loss. In the previous video, we discussed the basic principles of how to interpret the Weber and Rene test. In this video, we will go through some worked examples to help apply the knowledge learned from the last video. Here's example one. We have a patient who complains of hearing loss. There is lateralization to the left ear in the Weber test. Air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the right ear. And air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the left ear. Please pause the video and think about what type of hearing loss this patient likely has in both ears. This patient likely has sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear and normal hearing in the left ear. Let's go to this schematic diagram to help understand why. So in example one, in the Weber test, there was lateralization to the left ear. Remember the principles we learned about the Weber test in the last video. The principles were that sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss and sound lateralizes away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. So in terms of the findings of the Weber test in this patient, because the sound has lateralized towards the left ear, this either indicates conductive hearing loss in the left ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. Let's now think about the findings of the Rene test in the right ear. And again, remember from the last video, when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the ear, this is testing air conduction. And when the vibrating tuning fork is placed on the mastoid bone behind the ear, this is testing bone conduction. So in this example, the findings of the Rene test in the right ear showed that air conduction was greater than bone conduction. So this was a Rene positive test in the right ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the right ear, this either indicates normal hearing in the right ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. Let's now finally consider the findings of the Rene test in the left ear. And again, remember, when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the ear, this is testing air conduction. But when the vibrating tuning fork is placed on the mastoid bone behind the left ear, this is testing bone conduction. In this example, again, air conduction was greater than bone conduction in the left ear. So again, this was a Rene positive test in the left ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, this again either indicates normal hearing in the left ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. So in order to determine the likely overall diagnosis in this patient, we need to see where the findings of the Weber test and the Rene test agree with each other in both ears. So in the right ear, the Weber test and the Rene test agree with each other in that there is sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. So the Rene test in the right ear has confirmed that the lateralization that was seen in the Weber test was due to sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. In terms of the left ear, the Rene test has indicated that there is either normal hearing in the left ear or sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. However, the findings of the Rene test in the right ear and the Weber test has shown that there is only sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear, not the left ear. So this means that there is not sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear and there is normal hearing in the left ear. So the Rene test has confirmed that there is normal hearing in the left ear. So in terms of the overall diagnosis in this patient, there is sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear and normal hearing in the left ear. Let's now move on to example two. Again, we have a patient who complains of hearing loss. There is lateralization to the right ear in the Weber test. Bone conduction is greater than air conduction in the Rene test on the right ear and air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the left ear. Again, please pause the video and have a think about what the likely diagnosis is in this patient. So in this patient, there is likely conductive hearing loss in the right ear and normal hearing in the left ear. Let's have a look at this schematic diagram to explain why. So in terms of the Weber test in example two, there was lateralization to the right ear. Again, remember the principles of the Weber test. Sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss and sound lateralizes away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. So in terms of the findings of the Weber test in this patient, this either indicates conductive hearing loss in the right ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. Let's now think about the findings of the Rene test in the right ear. So in example two, bone conduction was greater than air conduction in the right ear. 
So this is a Rene negative test in the right ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the right ear, there is conductive hearing loss in the right ear. Let's now consider the findings of the Rene test in the left ear. In the left ear, air conduction was greater than bone conduction. So this is a Rene positive test in the left ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, this either indicates normal hearing in the left ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. So in order to determine the overall diagnosis in this patient, we need to see where the findings of the Weber test and the Rene test agree with each other in each ear. In terms of the right ear, the Rene test has confirmed that there is conductive hearing loss in the right ear. And this is also confirmed by the lateralization seen in the Weber test. In terms of the left ear, the Rene test has shown that there is either normal hearing in the left ear or sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. However, the findings of the Weber test indicates that there is no pathology in the left ear. So this indicates that there is normal hearing in the left ear. So in terms of the overall diagnosis in this patient, there is conductive hearing loss in the right ear and normal hearing in the left ear. Let's now move on to example three. Here we have a patient who complains of hearing loss. There is lateralization to the right ear in the Weber test. Air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the right ear and air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the left ear. So again, please pause the video and have a think about what the likely diagnosis is in this patient. The likely diagnosis in this patient is sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear and normal hearing in the right ear. Let's go back to the schematic diagram to help understand why. In terms of the Weber test, there was lateralization to the right ear. Again, remember the principles of the Weber test. Sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss, and sound lateralizes away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. So in terms of the findings of the Weber test in this patient, this either indicates conductive hearing loss in the right ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. In terms of the Rene test in the right ear, air conduction was greater than bone conduction in the right ear. So this is a Rene positive test in the right ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the right ear, this either indicates normal hearing in the right ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. Let's now consider the findings of the Rene test in the left ear. In the left ear, air conduction was again greater than bone conduction. So this is a Rene positive test in the left ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, this either indicates normal hearing in the left ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. So in order to determine the overall diagnosis in this patient, we need to see where the findings of the Weber test and the Rene test agree with each other in both ears. In the left ear, the Weber test and the Rene test both agree in that there is sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. In terms of the right ear, the Rene test shows that there is either normal hearing in the right ear or sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. However, the Weber test has confirmed that there is no pathology in the right ear so this indicates that there is normal hearing in the right ear. So in terms of the overall diagnosis in this patient, there is sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear and normal hearing in the right ear. Let's now move on to example four. Again, we have a patient who complains of hearing loss. There is lateralization to the left ear in the Weber test. Bone conduction is greater than air conduction in the Rene test on the left ear and air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the right ear. Again, please pause the video and have a think about what the likely diagnosis is in this patient. The likely diagnosis in this patient is conductive hearing loss in the left ear and normal hearing in the right ear. Let's go to the schematic diagram to help understand why. The Weber test showed that there was lateralization to the left ear. Again, remember the principles. Sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss and sound lateralizes away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. So in terms of the findings of the Weber test, this either indicates conductive hearing loss in the left ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. In terms of the Rene test in the right ear, air conduction was greater than bone conduction. So this indicates a Rene positive test in the right ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the right ear, this either indicates normal hearing in the right ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. In terms of the Rene test in the left ear, bone conduction was greater than air conduction in the left ear. So this is a Rene negative test. 
So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, this indicates conductive hearing loss in the left ear. So in order to determine the overall diagnosis in this patient, we need to see where the findings of the Weber test and the Rene test agree with each other. The Rene test in the left ear has shown that there is conductive hearing loss in the left ear, and this is also confirmed by the findings of the Weber test, which showed lateralization towards the left ear. In terms of the right ear, the Rene test showed that there is either normal hearing in the right ear or sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. However, the Weber test has shown that there is no pathology in the right ear, so this indicates that there is normal hearing in the right ear. So in terms of the overall diagnosis, there is conductive hearing loss in the left ear and normal hearing in the right ear. Let's now move on to example five. Here we have a patient who complains of hearing loss. There is no lateralization in the Weber test. Air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the right ear and air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the left ear. Again, pause the video and have a think about what the likely diagnosis is in this patient. So in this patient, there is either normal hearing in both ears or there is bilateral sensory neural hearing loss. Most patients with these examination findings will have normal hearing in both ears. However, let's go to the schematic diagram to help understand why there are two possible diagnoses. So there was no lateralization in the Weber test. So in terms of the findings of the Weber test, this either indicates normal hearing in both ears or indicates bilateral hearing loss. In terms of the Rene test in the right ear, air conduction was greater than bone conduction. So this is a Rene positive test. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the right ear, this either indicates normal hearing in the right ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. In terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, air conduction was greater than bone conduction. So this is a Rene positive test in the left ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, this either indicates normal hearing in the left ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. So to determine the overall diagnosis in this patient, we need to see where the Weber test and the Rene test findings agree with each other. So in most patients, when there is no lateralization on the Weber test, this usually indicates normal hearing in both ears. And the findings of the Rene test in both ears can agree with this. So patients with normal hearing in both ears will typically have these examination findings. However, if we consider a patient who has bilateral hearing loss, which also causes no lateralization on the Weber test, then the Rini test in both ears also agree with this, as the Rini test in both ears can also indicate sensory neural hearing loss in both ears. So this is why the overall diagnosis in this patient can either be normal hearing in both ears or could also indicate bilateral sensory neural hearing loss. Let's now move on to example six. Again, we have a patient who complains of hearing loss. There is no lateralization in the Weber test. Bone conduction is greater than air conduction in the Rini test on the right ear, and bone conduction is greater than air conduction in the Rini test on the left ear. Again, please pause the video and have a think about what the likely diagnosis is in this example. The likely diagnosis in this patient is bilateral conductive hearing loss. Let's go back to the schematic diagram to help understand why. So there was no lateralization on the Weber test, so in terms of the findings of the Weber test, this either indicates normal hearing in both ears or indicates bilateral hearing loss. In terms of the findings of the Rene test on the right ear, bone conduction was greater than air conduction. So this is a Rene negative test on the right ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test on the right ear, this indicates conductive hearing loss in the right ear. And in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, Again, bone conduction was greater than air conduction. So this is a Rene negative test. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, this indicates conductive hearing loss in the left ear. So in terms of the overall diagnosis in this patient, we need to see where the findings of the Weber test and the Rene test agree with each other. The Rene test in both ears confirm that there is conductive hearing loss in both ears. And this can also be agreed upon by the findings of the Weber test as the lack of lateralization is also a sign of bilateral hearing loss. So in terms of the overall diagnosis in this patient, there is bilateral conductive hearing loss. Let's finally move on to example seven. 
Again, we have a patient who complains of hearing loss. There is lateralization to the right ear in the Weber test. Bone conduction is greater than air conduction in the Rene test on the left ear. And air conduction is greater than bone conduction in the Rene test on the right ear. So again, please pause the video and have a think about what the likely diagnosis is in this patient. So in this patient, there are two possibilities for the diagnosis in the left ear. There is either combination hearing loss in the left ear, so there is both conductive and sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear, or there is deafness in the left ear, so there is complete loss of hearing in the left ear, which is also known as anacusis. There is likely normal hearing in the right ear. Let's go back to the schematic diagram. So on the Weber test, there was lateralization to the right ear. Again, remember the principles of the Weber test. Sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss and sound lateralizes away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. So in terms of the findings of the Weber test, this either indicates conductive hearing loss in the right ear or indicates sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. In terms of the findings of the Rene test in the right ear, air conduction was greater than bone conduction. So this indicates a Rene positive test in the right ear. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the right ear, this could either indicate normal hearing in the right ear, or it could indicate sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. In terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, bone conduction was greater than air conduction. So this is a Rene negative test. So in terms of the findings of the Rene test in the left ear, there is conductive hearing loss in the left ear. So in order to determine the overall diagnosis, we need to see where the findings of the Rene test and the Weber test agree with each other. The Rene test in the left ear has confirmed conductive hearing loss in the left ear. However, this contradicts the principles of the Weber test. As I told you that sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss. However, in this patient, sound lateralized away from the ear with conductive hearing loss. This suggests that the patient also has sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear because the sound lateralized away from the left ear. So the patient either has a combination of conductive hearing loss and sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear or has complete deafness in the left ear, also known as anacusis in the left ear. The Rene test in the right ear indicates that there is either normal hearing in the right ear or sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. However, the findings of the Weber test has confirmed that there is no pathology in the right ear, so there is likely normal hearing in the right ear. So in terms of the overall diagnosis in this patient, there is either combination hearing loss in the left ear or complete deafness in the left ear, and there is normal hearing in the right ear. So we have worked through various examples using the principles of the Weber test and the Rene test that we learned in the previous video. I hope you are now confident in being able to interpret the findings of the Weber test and the Rene test in patients with various types of hearing loss. Thanks for watching.